Setting the fashion bar high in the Seven Kingdoms, we're looking at the costumes of Tywin Lannister from the HBO series Game of Thrones. Coming up. Welcome back to Costume Co. If you're new here, I do almost weekly videos analyzing TV shows and movies from a costume perspective. If this is something that interests you, consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon so you don't miss out. Like father, like son, the Lannister men are often cut from the same cloth, at least fashion-wise. While we could argue that he's a tyrannical patriarch, Jamie and Tyrion have learned a thing or two from dear old dad when it comes to their sartorial styles. Before we get to the costumes, designer Michelle Clapton's new book, Game of Thrones The Costumes, release date is November 5th and available for pre-order at Amazon with a price guarantee. If you purchase it through the link that I have put down in the description below, I'll make a small commission at no additional cost to you. Warning, there are major spoilers for all eight seasons of Game of Thrones. We first meet Lord Tywin Lannister field dressing a stag, that's some big time symbolism, in the season one episode You Win or You Die. Actor Charles Dance said that skinning and gutting the real life stag was a bloody good time, but it took me two days to get the smell off my hands. It's interesting that the showrunners chose not to put an apron on him, but instead had him wear this leather gambeson, albeit without the sleeves. Under it, he's wearing a gray linen shirt, the typical foundation garment worn by men and women in Westeros. In episode 10, Tywin is prepared for battle in full Lannister armor. Costume designer Michelle Clapton said that the Lannisters and Baratheons have more ornate armor than the Starks. In King's Landing, there are street armorers, so there's competition. Simon Brindle, costume armor supervisor, said, The Lannister armor is more militaristic, intimidating, sinister, with a Japanese influence that's quite disarming. I love the opportunity to work on this series as you're not tied down to any one period. This was so freeing. Like Jamie and Joffrey, the pauldrons or shoulder guards feature embossed golden lions representing the Lannister House sigil. In this close-up from a still image, taken from the Making Game of Thrones blog, we see the lion also featured prominently on the cooter or elbow pieces. Now, if you saw my video on Jamie Lannister, you might remember that the ornately decorated armor, it's likely inspired by a real set of 16th century lion armor by Negroli. And the engravings are reminiscent of the Norse mythological symbol of the Tree of Life. And also, if you look closely, you'll also see a decorative lion belt mount. Here's an actual example of a lion belt mount from Make Your Own Medieval in Australia. According to their website, they were a supplier to Game of Thrones and The Hobbit. Tywin Lannister is one of the few principal characters to actually wear a helmet. This Sallet style helmet features a comb and barn doors. Here's a close-up of the helmet, also from the Making Game of Thrones website. Here's a larger depiction of the Tree of Life motif, or Yggdrasil. This helmet also features ear flaps. Here's an actual example of a Sally style helmet from the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. This steel and copper helmet from about 1480 is of German origin and the precursor of the German helmets used in World War I and II. Tywin is imposing in his full set of armor and crimson velvet sash in the episode The Garden of Bones. The sash is in connection to his stately position as Lord Paramount of the Westerlands. Tywin's armor is also more ornately decorated, including the addition of the gorget collar and this set of gauntlets. Even Jamie doesn't have those gloves. Here's a studio shot of the complete armor for the Making Game of Thrones blog. The armor and sash are much more vivid here. All of the decoration is happening on the front and side of the armor when they see you coming. No point in decorating the back, which is covered with a cape, or in Tywin's case, a sash. And finally, here's a shot of Tywin without all of the plate armor, except the neck gorget worn over his black leather gambeson. This gambeson is the same one worn when he had been field dressing the stag, but the sleeves have been added back on. Joffrey also wears a gorget over his leathers. 
Tywin is named Savior of the City in the episode Valor Morghulis. This is the same set of armor, but with a different sash. Pictured here is Tywin wearing the black gambeson without any armor on top and the brocade sash in close-up. Tywin's gambeson worn under his armor features a center front opening while Jamie's is asymmetrical. And he's wearing a stock tie around his neck, which is a typical fashion item for men in Westeros. Tywin always sports a black tie while Tyrion and Joffrey wear red. This look, while Tywin is hosting a war council at Harrenhal in the episode The Old Gods and the New, is a less militaristic costume. His knee-length coat, cut just like a gambeson, has a center front closure and a stand-up collar. It's made from a jacquard brocade type fabric and it's fastened with these really weighty front closures. His belt is the same though. This large floral Renaissance cloak clasp and pewter with brass overlay, a very close likeness I might add, is from Patterns in Time in Colorado. There is a back vent which allows a bit of fullness in the skirts. The cut is not unlike the Indian Sherwani coat or the 19th century western frock coat. Tywin holds a meeting with the small council in the same coat. And in episode 4 for Joffrey's funeral. Thomas' costume is cut in the same way. This is likely Tywin Lannister's most memorable look and one of the first introductions of laser cut leather to the series. This coat is made from a top layer of punched leather from leather suppliers D'Alessio Galliano and lined with a brocade and then it's bound in a contrasting leather. Clapton says of the Lannister Patriarch's wardrobe, Tywin is a little more opulent. I really like his look this season. There are a lot of really tough leather looks which were really detailed. They look rich. Some of the cut leather pieces are my favorite. Here's a close-up of the leather detail and these brass line fasteners. They're also featured on one of Joffrey's costumes as well. And here's a swatch of the leather fabric from D'Alessio Galliano. Of course, it's this costume that inspires Cersei's coronation gown in season six. Tywin wears it again while counseling his grandson Joffrey in episode seven and during Tyrion's second trial by combat. Tywin arranged marriages for both Cersei and Tyrion dressed in this menacing asymmetrical leather coat with just a hint of a diamond motif. This is the first time that Tywin wears this silhouette, this style worn by both his son Jamie and his nephew Lancel. While Clapton might have loved these black leather looks for Tywin in season 3, it might have been nice to see him dressed in something different to break it up, perhaps red or gold from the Lannister sigil. Tywin returns to this leather coat from season 1 and 2 in his negotiations with Olena Tyrell. Because the light is so much brighter in his office, you can actually make out the faint motif of the leather. It gives the coat a really lustrous quality. Here you can see the lacing. It's like Jamie's red leather jacket, only laced at the shoulders and left open at the bottom for venting and ease of movement. Tywin wears another asymmetrical black leather coat with this beautiful printed golden lion motif on the turned back collar and side skirt panels. The coat is closed at the waist with one giant brass hook. I thought I'd mention that Tywin saves this look for Tyrion when he's especially off-put by something he's done to embarrass him. In a new season, Tywin is showing some optimism for Joffrey's wedding by adding some color into his wardrobe with this dark red jacket with black closures in the episode The Lion and the Rose. Clopton stated, Tywin actually does wear red, which is very rare for him. She said, I think in this moment, this is sort of securing up the throne and so he's pulled up the red. So I try and play with colors and try and push people forward and back, try to show how patriotic they are to their family just by sort of what they wear. While his costume is beautiful, actor Charles Dance didn't think it was suited for the climate, saying, I find it very difficult, really, that here we are in King's Landing enjoying this wonderful climate and we're all dressed like this. Where's my long flowing robe that, you know, I can waft around in, get the wind up my skirt. Here's a close-up of the coat from the Making Game of Thrones website. He's paired it with this red belt again, the one that he wears with his armor. The fabric is by maker Rubelli, 
from their Rubelli Venezia collection in the color Tibet. Seeing that it's 100% polyester, it's understandable why it doesn't breathe. It's the same fabric used to make Tommen's coat from season five, but in the color Moro. Tywin doesn't return to black for Tyrion's trial in the episode The Laws of Gods and Men. This coat is a lovely textured fabric in a dark chocolate brown that's fastened with brass closures. He wears it with some over the knee high leather boots and black pants and his Hand of the King pin. And then he wears it again for Tommen's coronation. The last time we see Tywin alive is on the privy in the season four finale where he's wearing a full length shift. Even in death, Tywin is dressed in such finery as he's laid to rest in the season five opener, dressed in partial armor topped with this stunning chocolate brown velvet surcoat with a burned out velvet swirling motif. The cape sleeves are lined in pink, a less menacing color than crimson, and trimmed with this delicate pink trim along the seams. You can see that he's wearing his beautiful metal and black leather gauntlets that we first spotted back in season one. These images are taken from embroidery artist Michelle Carriker's website. The majority of her talents have been dedicated to women's costumes, so it's a lovely surprise to see her work featured on Tywin's final outfit, a standout feature on this costume. The Lannister sigil, it's captured with these two embroidered rampant lions facing each other, and they're surrounded by a cluster of metallics and matching soft rose colored beads. If you want to learn more about the Lannister costumes, be sure to check out both my costumes of Tyrion and Jaime Lannister. I'll see you in the next video.